I am beside myself with excitement to bring you this one. I've been trying to get an Oyster yacht onto the channel for a while because these are the Rolls Royce of sailing boats and I finally got one for you. Not only that, but this is the current flagship of the range. It's the 885, it's 88 feet. Uh, crucially, it fits just within the 24 meter regulations for load line length and it is an absolutely incredible machine. This one's actually nine years old and it's had some serious use and you'll see the condition of this is incredibly good and it's testimony really to the quality of the build on these. You can see how well it's looked after because right on the outside you see where these fenders are and you can see where they put this on to cover the hull to make sure the fenders don't put any wear onto the hull. It's an incredibly well looked after machine and it is amazing. So we're going to go on board and we are going to do the full tour. So we'll step on here. Now this is a section of guardrail that actually folds down. You'll see it on the other side, it's normally in place and it hinges over to give us this side boarding. We'll come on here and what I'm going to do is head back and then we'll work our way forward around the deck first and then the interior. It is all spectacular. Now the first thing to mention, you've got this wonderful deck out here on the aft section and we've got the seating around here as well. And in fact, while we're here, I'll show you this because this is the transom that folds down. So this hinges up flush across here. And in fact, if we go down here, you'll see that we've actually got in here a storage area for the dive bottles. There and there, there's a compressor on board so they can be refilled on board. So you can dive straight off the back of here. And in fact, there are ladders that slot into here as well, make it much easier to get on and off. So let's head on forward. The engineering on here is quite incredible. So for example, all of this, there's no stainless steel wire. It's all rod rigging. It's really, really firm. This mast and this boom is all carbon fiber and that's over 40 meters tall. The engineering is incredible. And I was told that a new mast is over half a million pounds. It's just an amazing thing. These winches, everything on here is hydraulically powered, not electric. This primary winch will take a nine ton load. And you'll see that the sheets that come back from the foresail come actually under the deck. And out here, these are the buttons that control it. So you don't have uh, lines under tension running down the deck when you're moving around. We'll head on forward first of all. You can see we've got the tender up here as well. So that gets lifted in and out, obviously off of the side. Decent sized tender that one, that's a Jet 430. So 4.3 meter tender, very good size. Look at this teak decking, look at the condition of it. As I say, this boat's almost a decade old and it looks like it's six months old. It's incredible. All of these, attention hydraulically. Um, that is the inner forestay. And then you've got the two outer forestays. These have got roller furling. The roller furling is also hydraulic. And then these tension hydraulically as well. The engineering on this is immense. I mean, this is a proper world girdling boat. It's designed to go anywhere across the Atlantic, across the Pacific, no problem. You can see the satellite communications domes there. You can see the radar up on the mast as well. That's oh, just sensational. Let's head on back down this side. The halyards, the actual mainsail is slab reefing and the halyards again are powered so they come down and across to this power winch here and then tensioned hydraulically. That's what these fellas here are for. Just in love with this. It's an amazing machine. Again, this rod rigging. Look at this solid stainless steel. Normally on sailboats, you get this sort of wire wrapped stainless. Not on here. This is the proper solid stuff. This is this side boarding ladder that I was mentioning. So this is what it looks like when it's in the raised position and it folds down and over as we saw when we came on. You can put a bimini on here. That's what this framework is for. It goes back across here. And if we come right back again, Again, you've got these massive, massive winches, all hydraulically controlled. And we'll come around here. And you've got the two helm positions. Now, people sometimes ask why there's two helm positions on a sailing boat. The reason is because when the sails are up and the boat's heeling over, the sails, if the wind is on this side, come down this side of the deck. And therefore, you take the raised position 
to give you a better view when she's tacking and going the other way and the wind is on that side and the boat's leaning that way, sails are down this side, then you helm from over on this side. You've got the seating positions here at the helm, you've got the multifunction displays of course, you've got the uh, wind instrumentation on here, big compass as you'd expect. That one there is hydraulic uh, main sheet control, so the main sheet actually comes back up through there and controls the mainsail, but you do it by using the joystick. And these are the uh, inner force stay and so on, all the controls for everything is all from here. If we head on to the other side, this one differs slightly because you've got the engine control here, so when you're docking the boat you control here. You've also got bow and stern thrusters and these are hydraulic. With electric, you can only run them for a limited period of time with hydraulic, they'll run and run. And apparently they'll push the boat sideways against 15 knots of wind, so that's pretty impressive. Again, the big compass and again the uh, tensioner for the main sheet. If we head on forward again then, you've got this lovely cockpit area here, slightly recessed down so you're a little bit more out of the weather. The table, of course, will fold up or open up with dining as it is at the moment seating down this side as well and then you've got the big sliding hatch that comes across here and if we head on into here well this is the yacht that keeps on giving because look at this now these are a deck saloon layout what that means is that you have this raised area here and then you drop down again with a more traditional yacht you come down these steps and you're right down deep in the hull which is where you are when you go further down. But with these, by giving you this sort of half level here, what it means is you've got the big windows all the way around, you can sit here, you've got a great view out, um, and it just means you're a little bit more in touch, you're out of the weather, but you're a bit more in touch with the elements and what's going on, you get a decent view, you're not buried in the hull. Seating all the way around here, this table will swivel around and then unfold, so you can have dining all the way around this whole area. And in fact, there is a seat that retracts into here as well. That's not there at the minute, but that comes out like a little jockey seat so you can sit around onto this side as well. If we spin on round then, we've got over on this side all of the uh, crockery for guests, all the glasses, and these are all specially made to fit exactly the glasses and the plates and everything else so that stuff isn't rattling around when you're out at sea. And that one there is an ice maker. In fact, it's switched on. There we go. It's got ice in it. That's what it makes. And then that one there is a fridge, I seem to recall. No, that is a wine cooler. There we go. It's a sort of fridge, isn't it? Cut reason, that one. You're going to have to excuse me on here. I am a bit giddy at getting on this because I'm just, it's just such an incredible, incredible machine. I mean, the thing with this is that it is about heading out and staying out. I mean, go around the world with this, no problem at all. We'll head on down here. This is the nav station. Now, this yacht is called Claire. It's named after the owner's mother. And there she is. She sails with the yacht at all times. I think that's lovely. If we have a look here, You've got obviously navigation screens, multifunction display. This is interesting because if you come across here, that's a VHF radio, which is what you'd normally have. That is a satellite phone, so that'll work anywhere in the world. And that one is an HF radio. And that again, it uses a backstay to have the aerial going right up to the top of the mast. And it means that you've got communications wherever you are, middle of the Atlantic, no problem. You can still communicate. And then again, wind instrumentation and uh, GPS and all that kind of stuff, weather, everything is there. And that's obviously where you do your, your planning and your plotting. If we come round then onto this side, this is your distribution board. So you've got your ship's uh, electrics um, and also the ship's mains power as well is all controlled from here. So circuit breakers, switching, all of that kind of stuff. This one is number three, as you can possibly see. They've built, I think I'm right in saying they've built over 100 of these now. It's been an incredibly popular boat for them. And you can see why. Now up here the layout gets interesting because, or I'll just show you underneath here actually as well, there's so many little things to show you on here. This is the forced ventilation system, so these are fans to all the cabins so you can control how much air is going in. There's also air conditioning and there's also heating, but that is just ventilation. 
if we have a look around here then, now this is interesting because you can have this boat with a guest cabin here and a heads. So that'd be closed off. Uh, you come around here, heads is in this corner, and then you've got obviously your berths in here. What this owner wanted because he had young children was a separate little area where they can come and uh, just chill out or play. So there's a TV in here, there's game stations in here. If we have a look in this one, uh, we can see some of the different systems that it's got in there. So it's basically like a, like a chill out area for the kids and a gaming area. You've got books there as well as you can see. That's fantastic. But what's really interesting is you see this here which looks like a door. It kind of is and it isn't because actually what's behind there is the mast that goes right down to the keel. What that does is it comes across here. You can have a slide out section that comes out here and you can turn that into a cabin. And what happens then is that there's a section that comes out down here. You can make that into two single beds. In fact, if you have a look over here, you can see there's one of the infill cushions for that conversion. So you can convert this into a fourth cabin if you wish. But this, as it's set up, of course, is brilliant. Now, it gets interesting here because as we go into here, this is all the crew area. The actual main accommodation for the boat, the sleeping and so on, for guests is all back there. We will look at that, but we'll head this way first of all. So this is the galley. There's a massive fridge here. Let me find my way in. There we go. It's really deep, goes a long way back. There's also, obviously, freezer capacity as well. Uh, there's a freezer there, for example. She's apparently got enough capacity for frozen food for six crew for 20 days. So when you're sailing the world, you know, them white bits don't need to worry you at all. Miele washing machine, Miele dryer, uh, Miele induction hob over here. The cooker is underneath. There's a microwave up there as well. Extractor fan and then just tons of storage all around here, 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 all the way around. Because of course, you know, if you are heading out across those big journeys, you need to be able to make sure that you've got plenty of food. That's the most important thing. Um, if we have a look down here, that is a salad drawer. So again, more refrigeration. There's a water maker on this boat as well. So she can make her own water while she's out at sea. You don't have to worry about that. Coffee machine is up here. Really nice area and in fact the crew get their own mess area as well that's down here you see we've got tv up here there's access straight up onto the deck from here as well so that's a great area to come and chill out when you're not actually up and crewing it's a big crew space isn't it and then of course you have got the actual crew cabins so if i spin around a little bit further that's the tv up on the wall this then would be the captain's cabin. Now this can be obviously a single or as a double. So quite often you'll get a couple that run a boat like this where you've got a captain and then his wife or partner as crew and they can therefore use this as a shared area. Um, hatch up above, storage all the way along here and in behind here as well. And if we spin on round, then there's a very nice heads, separate shower area in here. That's all a nice size, nicely lit, plenty of natural light. Very good. And then if we come forward again, there's another crew cabin here. So separate door, so these all of course close off. Bunk beds in here. Now if you had a boat like this that was being owner run, you probably have two crew. If you're looking to charter, you probably have four because obviously there's a lot of work involved in changing beds every time, charter the start and finish and so on. So it can take up to four for that reason you wouldn't necessarily run with four if you're an owner using this by themselves. Another toilet in here, shower in here, so it's basically a wet room. That goes through to the sail locker. It's also accessed from the deck and it's full of sails at the minute, so we can't open it and get in there. You'd need to access from the deck to see that. And again, you've got the sink and so forth just there. So really decent crew areas. And again, all the woodwork and everything else is all to guest cabin standard. There's a load of storage. You see all these hatches in the floor as we go through. There's a load of storage all the way through because they have spares for everything. Electrics, pumps, engines, you name it, generators, loads and loads of spares because you don't want to be in the middle of the Atlantic, something stops working and you haven't got the parts to fix it. And if we head on back again, this takes us through to the engine room. Now what you've got in here, of course, is the main engine. That's just there. That's a 350 horsepower engine. Now with that engine, 
She'll motor at about seven to eight knots, when obviously the idea is to sail, but she will motor quite happily with that. Um, and in fact, there's enough fuel to run for nine to 10 days, I'm told. So 1,200 to 1,500 miles under power. I mean, you wouldn't typically do that because the whole point is it's a sailing boat, but you could, because again, the whole point of a boat like this is autonomy. If there's no wind and you want a motor that you've got that ability, you can just keep on going. Same with generators. There's a generator on that side and there's a generator on this side. So if you had a problem, you can run off of just one generator. Also, there's massive battery banks on here. And in fact, you can see across there, there are three chargers and an inverter. So even if you lost both generators, you could still run the mains electric through an inverter from the batteries while you've got that sorted out. And in fact, talking of redundancy, we look over here and we see the hydraulics systems over here. Now the hydraulics, that's for all the winches and the tensioners and all that kind of stuff. And they will run from the batteries they will run from a power takeoff from this, so this can power the hydraulics directly, and there's another power takeoff on the engine. So if you're running the engine, of course, you can just power it straight from that. If you're not running the engine, you'd have the generator on to power it, or if you weren't making many changes, you just want to do the occasional thing, it'll run off the battery. So again, it's all about redundancy. You can see we've got a little workbench here, we've got the, the vice on there. These are air conditioning units. It's a reverse cycle air conditioning, so they'll heat as well as cool. That's fantastic. Let's go right on over here, shall we? It's an engine room fit for a yacht like this, isn't it? A world striding machine. Just fantastic. All the isolator switches are here as well. Brilliant. Let's go on back. Still lots more to see. So back through this crew area. Back through here. This is this, it's like a den really, isn't it? And could be a fourth cabin. And then if we spin on round, nav station and steps up. Back up to the main saloon, we come past. This is where we came in, in the first place. And then back here, we drop down and we will find, first of all, that there is a day heads here. So there's a doorway here, and this of course at night would be used if you had that forward area, that den converted into a fourth cabin, they would come through and use this one. If they're not using this, then you can close that off and this becomes an ensuite. You can see there's a door just here, and that it means that it links directly to this cabin. Now there's a lot of adaptability here as well because this is two singles, there is a Pullman here, so this will hinge out and it hinges outwards and upwards. So it ends up at about this height. So it's not, you know, it looks a bit like it's going to end up squashed over that berth. It's not, it cantilevers up and into position. So you can have three, that's brilliant for kids, of course. But what you can also do is remove that bedside table, move this one across, put the bedside table back into that corner and have this set up as a double if you wish. Also, you'll see as we go through, there are these which are partly to support that when it's out, but you can see there's also hooks back down underneath here. All of these berths, all the way through, they all have lee cloths on them. What that is, is a cloth that comes down here. So if the boat's healed over, you don't roll out of bed. If we go across to the other side, there's another very nice cabin here. This is a double cabin, very nice size. Absolutely beautiful. These are hull windows. Now, you remember on the outside, we had those big sheets that came down and they uh, were protecting the hull from the fenders. In fact, if we cross back over, because I think there were some in here as well. Yeah, there we go. And on this side, we can see out. Now, what's really interesting about these, there we go, is now imagine them with the boat heeling over on a reach. These are underwater. You sit in here and you look out underwater at the fishes. How unbelievably fantastic would that be? <laughs> I now feel my life is not going to be complete until I've done it. That's brilliant. This, of course, has its own ensuite. I told you I was going to get giddy, didn't I? There we go. Shower in there, so there's a rainfall shower. But have you noticed the condition of this? I say it's almost 10 years old, it's almost a decade old, and it's just like new. It's been incredibly well looked after, but it's also testimony to the build quality of these. I mean, they're just the woodwork, everything is just lovely. So those are the two guest cabins back here. There is, of course, another cabin, and that is the owner's cabin, and that is right back aft. Check this out. That's beautiful. Again, those big hull windows, 
masses of storage all the way around here. We've got AV equipment in here as well. So your TVs on the wall, for example. Look at these finishes as well. It's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. We come right around here. This is all storage. Normally I open lockers and show you, but there's just too many. And then there's this lovely spot down here to tuck yourself away with the proverbial good book. Air conditioning controls. Each of these cabins has its own air conditioning controls. That's what these little fellas down here are for. So you can set that to the temperature you want and that then controls that. You've got blinds that come down. These blinds are electrically controlled. You push a button and they drop down or rise up. And as you'd expect, there's an ensuite in here as well. Storage up into here, heated towel rail, lovely big shower in behind here. Again, rainfall shower. And we can't leave an oyster without a little wave in the mirror. There we go. But isn't that a magnificent cabin? If you want to go sailing, <laughs> you want to go around the world, <laughs> you want one of these, don't you? I'm not saying it couldn't be done on a smaller boat or a lesser boat, but this is doing it in style. Just superb, absolutely superb. Okay, let's come back up through here, back up to this deck saloon, and I think we will finish off yeah, up here at this deck saloon, this would be a nice place to round up. So I am going to say massive, massive thanks to Oyster Yachts. They've organised this tour for me. I'm so pleased to be able to bring you this. It's just an absolute gem. And a uh, huge thanks to you guys, of course, for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we look forward to catching you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.